okay hello um this is my second video or whichever one you see first um this is my august reads wrap up um so all the books i read this month i feel like i had a pretty good month i've read 15 books this year this what this month i've read 15 books this month so much better than my three last month um my goal was like initially at least 20 but I didn't read for like at least 15 days this month one of which was like a 12 day stretch where I just stopped reading I really got to do better about that but I didn't read 15 so I'm really proud of myself um and I read some of the books that was not it was not within the plan to read I was gonna go through at least some of my TBR I was gonna use my little TBR bank that I made to force myself to read books that I've been wanting to read forever and it didn't happen nope I started one book one book just to be a whole anyway um but yeah I read so many books that I normally wouldn't a lot of what I read were rereads and a lot of what weren't rereads were books that I would normally never pick up otherwise but I would was curious enough about them that I read them so but anyway I started the month off on Coffee Boy by Austin Chant this is the same author who wrote Peter Darling um and I loved Peter Darling so I was excited to read this it was a quick cute little read I just wanted to start the month off on a good note on the first read a book and finish a book on the first and so it was like already late in the day so I needed something quick to read and I'm happy I read this it was cute um it was I love Austin Chan I love Peter Darling it's like my favorite thing ever and I have a TikTok it's at Shanae 0599 um S H A N A E O five nine nine. Anyway, and I I posted a dedications video, um, where I would read the dedications in the books and to convince people to read them. And the first book I did was Peter Darling. So a lot of people were like, "I'm adding this to my TBR. You've convinced me to read this book or that book." But especially Peter Darling seemed to be the most favored one out of all six of the ones I read, and I was super happy about that. Um, it it blew up in a way I wasn't expecting. Not like big time blew up, but it had like last time i saw it was almost at 50k views and like 14k likes i was not expecting that but i was so happy about it and i'm so happy i got other people into these books and so i i'm i'm doing more of those that's not the point that's not the point the point is coffee boy i read first it's the first book i read this month it was quick cute little read um after that i read i reread simon versus the homo sapiens agenda by becky albertalli now I don't know where my copy is. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere over there and I don't feel like looking for it. So I read it digitally. Um, and what made me reread it is because I, I kept seeing people talk about the movie Love, Simon and I I hate the movie. I feel like if it was like its own individual thing, I wouldn't hate it nearly as much. But when you're given the book, right? And then you watch the movie, it's the worst thing because they they change so much they change so much and my biggest pet peeve is the the ferris wheel that's my biggest pet peeve because it has nothing to do with the book nothing like you they glimpse the ferris wheel at the um carnival scene they don't go on it they, they went on the tilt world the tilt world was the vital to the book and also big gestures why everything in Simon Versus was exaggerated and big gesturized onto the movie and I hate it. The the outing wasn't done like that. They didn't out, he just, he didn't post emails. He just made a post with an illusion of blue. I just, there were so many things. It made me so mad and I felt the need to reread the book because I was so angry at the movie and I've never forgiven the movie for that, that they felt the need to over dramatize every little thing and make everything into this big gesture, even the worst parts about it. And I hated it, hated it. I felt like that straight gay love triangle BS was unnecessary. I felt like Bram kissing that chick at that party and Simon walking in on them unnecessary. None of that happened in the book. Why? I don't understand why you felt that it, it just, I hate the movie, as you can tell. I felt like if it was stood on its own and it wasn't based off this, I might have enjoyed it more just because it's its own thing and it wasn't that bad objectively. But when you compare it to this book, you took out all the depth and everything and all the simplicity of this book and made it to this over-dramatized huge grand gesture even in the worst ways 
thing and I hate it. I hate it a lot. So I reread it because I hated the movie that I needed to reread the book. And I enjoyed rereading it. Um, I think the first time I read it was in 2018 and it was one of the first queer books that I got to really read that wasn't on Wattpad. And it made me really happy and I really enjoyed it when I first read it. And I still enjoy it now, but after being given so much more and better queer stories, it's just not the same. It doesn't rate the same anymore to me. Um, but I still enjoyed it, you know? Still a cutesy little sweet story, but it's no longer like up there to me. Cause I found so many more better queer tellings, queer stories, especially for people of color. Um, but it always have a special place in my heart because it was one of the first that I got to find actually published out there. Um, so yes, I know I spent a good little minute talking about that. Then I started reading another book. I started reading Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland, which is something I wanted to read forever. And it's what I pulled out of my TBR bank because I, okay, I made this. This is a coin bank that came in a rainbow crate box. Y'all probably, if, I've posted a video unboxing it a couple months ago, but I don't have coins that I really just keep or whatever. So I have, I wrote on 200 little mini note cards, a whole bunch of book titles that I want to read. And I put them in here. Well, most of what I could fit in here. And the first one I put out was, well, the second one I put out was Beyond the Black Door. Um, I read the first one. I'm sorry and I'm not I'm not gonna start over normally I would but I don't feel like it um because I thought that was funny um but yeah so I put up beyond the black door and I'm super excited to start it and I only got to like chapter two before I couldn't stay focused and it wasn't anything because of the story because I'm still super excited to read it I just my attention was just not there so why is it okay I don't know what that meant um oh but yeah my attention just wasn't there and I somebody had posted somebody had posted this um book on tiktok this i omega by carrie greg like i said i was reading literally everything except what i would normally read and this was very out there um i it's a fan fiction reader as a wapad reader as an ao3 reader if you know anything about a alpha beta omega i got curious i got curious when i saw this title so i had to read it and it was funny because with beyond the black door one of the main reasons i want to read it because it's asexual representation my characters ace i'm ace i was so excited for it <laughs> and this was like the, the antithesis of that it was the plot wasn't even that important to the story itself you know why you were really really reading it and it wasn't something that i would normally read outside of fan fiction um but i was curious so i, I read it and i just I thought it was so funny oh because it was the exact opposite of everything um i would normally read but it wasn't that bad i mean it was really short um it was really quick um it's just what plot what plot really that's a i'm gonna move on now okay so the next thing i read was our finest hour by jennifer malikin um now this one is another read i found because it's exotic and read digitally um I'm trying to remember oh and this one basically because i was curious about how they set it up so she was i found the author she was talking about how um oh so this girl she she has abandonment issues um and she's in this relationship and this dude breaks up with her on april fool's day so she's thinking this might be a joke and he's like no and he calls her and breaks up with her like this is a a i'm breaking up with you over the phone it's so trifling and she's like is this a joke is this, is this an april fool's joke and he's like no i'm sorry this was a really crappy way of telling you but um but no i'm breaking up with you and she's like what and so for a few days she's just kind of out of it and her best friend notices it she hasn't told her best friend they're also roommates and at one point she finally tells her the best friend's like bro we're going out going to a bar we're getting you drunk you're getting you're gonna hook up with somebody it's the best way to get over it somebody and she didn't want to do it but then they go to the club that goes to this out of the way club that she would they you know because it's unlikely that he'll ever go there and she meets this dude 
well first she she wants to leave and the friend's like no but the friend is up like going off with somebody so she when she's sick of the friends distracted she's gonna leave somebody ends up coming to her and was like i hope you weren't gonna leave because i was gonna come bring you this drink they end up talking getting along kind of relating a little bit to each other eventually agreed to have a one night stand without exchanging last name nothing too serious or whatever um but it's clear that he's kind of feeling it he's feeling like this could be something he's gonna go out to the country mind you he's gonna go out of the country for like a while but he's like hey we can pick this back up um when i come back if you want and she's like no because she's not she's not in the place she's heartbroken she's not in the right place for it and he you know but he was he was understanding so they have their little one hour the uh, one hour is an hour is the, the big plot point because he's like give me an hour and if at the end of the hour you still don't want to like keep in touch after we do this so it is fine so they have their little hour together they fall asleep she tries to sneak out or whatever um turns out a few days a few weeks later she realizes she's pregnant she knows he's unlikely to be at the apartment because she he said he was gonna leave the country and his stuff was all packed up when she went to the apartment with him when they slept together and of course he wasn't there so she goes back moves back in with her dad mind you she had abandonment issues because of her mama um she she ain't in the picture but she goes back moves in with her dad has this baby like four or five years later um her daughter needs surgery she has a daughter her daughter needs surgery so they <laughs> she takes it to the hospital um they call in this emergency doctor from another hospital guess who it is it's the the daddy it's the it's the one night stand it's the baby's daddy right right it's crazy um but of course so she's like how do i tell him i have to tell him um and then you know stuff happens after that and that's what it drew me in i was curious i had to read it so i did um and it was it was it was kind of sweet it was real it's real sweet it was real cute um just the tiniest bit of angst i enjoyed it um and then after that, like I said, I was reading everything except my own books that I should have been reading that I wouldn't normally read. So then after that, I read Sweet Obsession by Kelly Rose. Please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. And also don't read half of these books if you're under 18. Don't do it. Um, I am 22. Don't read them if you're under 18. Like Sweet Obsession by Kelly Rose. Um this is book one mind you there are three books i don't know how to describe this one this one the main character she has one arm so she she has a messed up past two um she bounced around between foster homes has a really terrible foster parents um she went to this one club with this one girl she wouldn't even really friends with or whatever and as she was leaving she sees these three dudes over there talking um and then she sees this car pulling up pulling out this gun or whatever and she's like she doesn't even think about it she basically tries to like she she gets it stands in front of them she blocks them she takes the shot she gets shot three times um loses her arm in the process almost dies um a few years later something happens i think and then she's getting mugged and the the guys come out and they beat up the dude and they take care of it or whatever turns out they've been watching her for like i think it's been like three years two three years they've been watching her that whole time she lost her arm or that she just one arm she wouldn't she wouldn't gonna be able to fight off the dude super well they take the dude turns out they've been watching her um and then they start popping up everywhere she knows they're watching her now they're popping up everywhere um and they become a big part of her life and she keeps telling them to go away and they're like haha no they're like no who are you and the big main dude marcus i think he is the main dude who trying to get all up in there and they sleep together um the whole consent thing is a little just the way a lot of things are handled eh, i don't know but a lot of stuff happens um i really don't know where to go with it like it's a lot I have no idea how to explain it. Eventually, all three of them end up together. Well, all three of them end up with her individually. Like, it's not like all... Yeah, all three of them are with her. And she's with all three of them, but they're not with each other. It's a lot. Um, 
there's three books i have no idea what else to tell you um they they are a part of this the, the dudes they're part of this game this game um where their parents entered them in and the dude who's like secretly leading the city or whatever who's secretly controlling the city has his hands and everything they're supposed to be competing to be his heir because he doesn't have any kids and so he set up this whole game so one of them is supposed to win to be his heir um to prove that he's the most powerful and this involves killing the other people in the game and there was like 12 of them i think it's a lot she ends up getting dragged into it i just have no idea what else to tell you i'm genuinely like <laughs> no idea where else to go with that and of course the second book i read was sweet retribution by callie rose of course it's the second book in the series um i don't even remember which book the problem with me is when it comes to series i can never remember what happens in which book I will think one thing happened so much earlier and one thing happened so much later than it originally does. So, you know, I, I couldn't tell you more than what I've already told you. I don't know what happens in which book. So, um, then I read another book. I read Marriage for One by Ella Mays, Ella Mays, Ella Macy, whatever. Um, this was something I saw on TikTok. Now, I'm not a romance book reader. I, rom romance is cool. I like it more as like a subplot. I like a little romance more, especially if it's gay. But this obviously is not. But I don't know what made me read it. I think it was a marriage of convenience trope. And I, I do like that. I do like the whole angsty, I like the kind of being forced together and then eventually falling together trope, um, falling in love trope. But so I think that's what made me read it. Um, it was a marriage of convenience thing so i do not remember the characters names the main character she ends up marrying this dude he's kind of rich he's a lawyer or whatever he got some money and she's trying to she's trying to keep ownership of her uncle's this building on prom estate or whatever like his prom positioning um in this prime neighborhood or whatever for her cafe business and her uncle had promised her like i think six months or no i think it was two years she had promised her he because her his her uncle was rich and she has these two cousins that were his kids and when her parents died when she was younger they he took them her in and they were never particularly affectionate or ever really treated her like they were her like she was their own but they did kind of care for her and they would like sometimes have dinner or whatever they weren't the really they weren't the best but they weren't the worst they didn't like but the cousins her cousins never liked her and they never played with her or whatever um and the uncle wouldn't let her own the building or whatever but before he had told her he could use she could use the building for two years for this cafe she had always dreamed of opening and um um and then she had to pick up a move but he dies and the cousins refuse to honor the the contract the deal that she had made with him um so this dude this lawyer dude finds out about it and he's like i'm a i'll marry you turns out in the contract um in in his it turns out in his will that if she's married then when he dies the husband gets the building gets to own the building so the dude's like hey i'll marry you we can make a trade i'll marry you i get the property you can use it for two years like he originally promised and this and then in return you come with me to like business dinners and such and galas and fundraisers and everything because they'll take me more seriously if i marry quotation marks anyway and so like a marriage of convenience type thing um and of course eventually they found love i did not care for it that much it was over 500 pages of why no why for what i don't understand um it is dual point of view which i'm not the biggest multiple point of view person but i can tolerate dual point of view i can um but his point of view was kind of really annoying to me he was kind of getting on my nerves he just it was getting on my nerves 
the whole way the romance setup was getting on my nerves it, the whole book was irritating my soul um so i didn't care for it and i think it's more like like i said i'm not the biggest romance reader so it's a little biased in that regard but i just hate the whole way it was set up his pov would made me want to strangle him um i just felt like a lot of certain things were just like really rushed or like not as big of a play as it should have been i don't know i didn't care for it but i know that a lot of people on tiktok did so and then of course the third book i read was sweet salvation by kelly rose which is the third book to the previous books i had took a break i didn't want to read the third book right away so i had read marriage for one in between um so then after i finished marriage for one i went back to sweet salvation um and again i don't know what else to tell you about that series um and then after that like i said i, I did a lot of rereading this month i reread the fox hill court and now i understand that i just read this in february and i, I rarely ever reread books before i don't reread books that often even when i really want to because i just can't focus on things that i've already know is gonna happen but i reread the fox hill court mm -hmm. i adore sakovic i was obsessed with this series i didn't in february i didn't i did not like this book in february i was like why, why is this so popular and i almost didn't finish the series i don't know if i i don't remember if i said that what in back in february when i made this video but i was like i didn't understand why this series was so popular because i just didn't care for it and then like two months later i finally read the rest of the series and i understood it. there was crack in these pages despite how poor the writing is despite how a little problematic it is um but i i loved i enjoyed every bit of it because then i read i reread the raven king after it i just i adore these the series i don't care what anybody says i adore me some andrew minyard minyard i enjoy some neil Justin. i enjoy my i don't know about nikki i like nikki post book one i mean i like everybody else post book one book one just was ugh. But Nikki Himmick, I adore him. Matt and Dan, even Allison and Renee. I just love my characters. The Raven King is where everything starts getting better. Just, that is the Kingsman. Cause then I of course had to finish it. And I've been tempted to reread this book alone. Just this book a third time this year. Kingsman, because this is where everything comes to a head. It's where everything gets better. Like I just want to reread the last two or three chapters of this book and then and then read this i mean there's a couple more scenes that i want to read but i specifically want to read the the last three chapters leading into this book I just, this book is so freaking good for two whole books we get no romance we're thinking and i kept wondering why everybody i thought i also just started assuming that like andrew and neil was like fanning i thought it was a fandom thing i thought it was just a ship that wasn't actually true because i was like i'm not seeing any romance here none book three hits you in the face with it and not in the way you would you would normally read romance but i adored every inch every second of this book every freaking second um of this series minus first book i will be having exclusive dust jackets one day it should be here probably in august because she had to set up a pre-order because they were so popular and they kept going out and i didn't get my hands on them in time but I pre-ordered them, so they shall be here. She says she'll send them out in August, October. So, <clears throat> my voice is going out. Um, and then I continue to do more rereadings. I reread Existence by Abby Glanz. Now, this is a series. This is the first book of a series. I didn't reread the rest of the series. It's only three books. I didn't, and they're fairly quick. They're not finished rereading them um i had adored this series in middle school i did dank slash death i adored him but rereading it now like the world building not that it needs a lot of world building because for the most part it's based in the real world it's just that the writing and the romance it's just one of those things you know when you go back and reread the romances and stuff you read when you were a child and you're like this moved so quickly and it made no sense how we got here how do you already know you love him in what world how why are you so obsessed with him and you literally just met him why so i mean 
I had to finally buy the series because just because I wanted to own all the books that I liked back then and I own a lot of them except this one so I needed it so I got it but rereading it it was just not where it was at and I just could not bring myself to finish rereading the series maybe one day not this month though um but yeah um what's her name Pagan she's just a normal girl except she can see ghosts but they can't talk to her they tried when they realized she could see her see see them but they try to speak and they can't um they just look confused and sad and they move on and then she sees dank she assumes that he's another ghost um turns out he's not um and when and he can speak and she's like what you can speak you're, you're not a normal ghost and he's like what do you mean and then he finds out she can see ghosts and he's like oh oh my god um I just realized now I do need to finish the series because I just realized the one scene that I cared about when she learned certain things is just not in this one. But I have to finish the series. It's not gonna be this year probably. It might if I need a quick read. Um But yeah, anyway, they become obsessed with each other really quickly and fall in love and it was weird. Um and then I read reread more books. <laughs> I reread If I Stay by Gail Foreman and this is another book series that I read. I can't remember if I read this in middle school or high school but I had loved it. Um, there was a movie based off of it. But basically Mia and her it's a snow day her and her family her and her little brother who's like 8 Mia's like 17. They get out of school for the day because it's a snow day her mom calls out of work and because her dad's a teacher he's also off so they're like her mom's calls out of work because she's like if y'all threw you out i'm not going in and they decide to take a little trip car accident happens both her parents and her brother die and she is in a coma and the whole book is most of the book is well half the book is like flashbacks to like previous times and everything and memories or whatever but the other half is her in and having an outer body experience her astral projecting or whatever um while she's in a coma and she's having this outer body experience and experiencing everything going on around her while she's in the coma in the whole book you're wondering whether or not she's gonna stay and live um the whole book she's trying to dis most of the book she's trying to decide if she's going to live because she hears the nurse tell her family that it's up to her um, whether or not she lives it it just has to be whether or not she she has to fight she has to decide whether or not she lives um I don't, Mia didn't really think that the nurses she knew the nurses probably knew like understood it better than like you know most people but I don't think she the nurses realized just how true it was and she literally had to decide um and so yeah the whole book is her trying to decide whether or not she's gonna stay but then there's a sequel that i also reread where she went once again by gail foreman this is in adam's point of view now adam is her boyfriend in the first book he's her boyfriend he's her broken he spends a good portion of the, move, the book trying to see her when the nurse wouldn't let him see her or whatever and he tries to do this whole distraction everything to get in to see her and okay also preface um Mia her whole family is musical in some form of way her mom's like this rock musical lover yada 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 her dad was a rock and roll type dude all that stuff he had a used to have a band used to play drums write the lyrics and all of this she was planning on being like her parents and then she fell in love with the cello when she was little and so she always played classical music um, so she's very different from the rest of her family in that way and other ways, but especially in that way. And her boyfriend is also very into rock and roll. This is, this is, um, so yes. And he has, also has a band and he's getting super big popular. She was going to go off to the Juilliard. His band was getting super big and was getting signed and getting attention and having to go on tours. They are always wondering how they were going to do it. Anyway, where she went, it's in Adam's point of view, the boyfriend's point of view. And he, spoiler for if I stay she lives she decides to stay because Adam begged her essentially um but where she went 
they is again I say in Adam's Twenty Three, his band has taken off. It's like three years after if I stay, I think. The band has gotten huge, it's taken off, they're on tour. Um she went to Juilliard, but when she went to Juilliard, she basically ghosted him. Broke his heart. He's super hurt and upset. But he's also feeling guilty because at the end of if I stay again, spoilers he told her he was like he begged her to stay he played her music and he was like my friend was telling me that sometimes being being reminded of your old life will be hard for you and you might just need to leave and disappear and like cut us all off or whatever because her both her parents and her brother is dead her brother was eight years old mind you um so he was like, I'll understand if you, as long if you live, as long as you stay, I'll understand if, you know, you cut me out of your life. I'd rather lose you that way instead of losing you this way. And she, she was a lot. And anyway, yeah, so he's heartbroken. She, she ghosted him when she went off to Juilliard and he pushed the band away. He quit the band at first. But eventually he came back. He eventually pushed them away as people though. And like, even though they're still super popular, he's no longer on friendly terms with them. I'm not gonna lie though. I think the band was on, was kind of crappy friend. The only one who was mostly a decent friend was Liz. And even after a certain point, she made me mad. Like, I'm not gonna lie. That band did not have his back at the end of the day. I get being upset with how he handled things. I get feeling upset how he, I get it. No, y'all ain't have to do my bands like that. Didn't have to do them like that, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I reread these books. Um, oh, he he's in New York at one point for um, an interview and stuff and other things. The whole band was, but the band they don't really do too many interviews together anymore because again they don't really get along anymore. It's a whole lot. He's in New York though, and he ends up running into Mia. Well, he runs into a poster that he sees of her for this concert that's happening that night. And he goes, um, and she hears through the grapevine that he's there. So he asks, she asks Usher to go bring him to her. And he goes. And other plot ensues. Um, and then last but not least, I reread Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Reardon. Um, I haven't read this since middle school in the series and I've never finished the spinoff series. I've got like three books into that I think so I'd have to I've decided I wanted to reread them and to finally finish the spinoff series and considering the fact that I've slowly collected all of his series excuse me these hiccups um I felt like I finally need to reread the first series finish the second series and then start the other series. So that was my goal. Um, I'm sure most of you know, but if not, Percy Jackson. Um, if you most of you know Percy Jackson, that's about. But if not, um, Percy Jackson, he is just a normal 12 year old boy going to sixth grade. He has ADHD, he's dyslexic, he bounces between school, he's keep getting kicked out of him for one thing or another. Turns out he's a demigod. He's a Greek demigod. He's his father is Poseidon, which you find out like halfway through the book i really don't know what else to say because i feel like almost everybody knows what pricey jackson's about um but yeah so I reread that i this i took three days to read this reread it because i just could not focus during the daytime like i was only reading it at night because during the day i was doing anything but reading and also school has started back up again this was this is the second week of school um and i'm not enjoying it so reading isn't going to be quite as often unfortunately but i'm still hoping for at least 15 books this, for in september um i might make a video of the books that i want to read in september um but yeah so these are the 14, 15 books 15 books i think that i have read this month for august if you bothered to watch this far this long i appreciate you maybe go follow me on instagram or TikTok, which is both Shanae 0599, S H A N A E 0599. Um, until next time, thank you.